Okay, now we're ready for part three. We've shown you how to prepare. We've shown you how to do the actual surgery with the endoscope. And now we're actually going to finish it. So in order to do this, what you've got to do is first raise the head of the bed, look right down at it. We're going to use a special retractor or the sin to pull posteriorly. We're going to drill a hole at the top of the incision, insert the endotine, pull the skin down over the prongs, and then we're going to repeat on the opposite side. So in order to see properly, you want to raise the head of the bed up so you can be looking straight down into the incision so you can tell you're exactly in the right place for what you want to do. Uh, first thing you do is then uh, take the sin retractor and you pull posteriorly, uh, distract it posteriorly, and hold everything in a proper position. Now basically I pull it as tight as it'll get because uh, I know that I've freed everything that I can and now we have the uh, scrub turn everything on, double check that it's working, come to the high point of the brow and pull directly posteriorly from that. Now what I'll do is then with it in the properly distracted position I'm going to now drill a hole at the top of the incision. I mark it first then I relax with my sin and then we'll let this come forward a little bit and then you can see exactly where your drill bit is drilling. Now have the scrub pull the hair on either side because if you catch the hair you can actually rip the hair right out of there. So once the drill catches then we'll start drilling and we'll drill a hole that uh, will be just the thing that we need for the endotine. This is a special bit that they have with the endotine. Now we'll suction out the hole and make sure that it's fine. The most common problem with these is you don't get enough depth. So I actually will uh, drill, then suck, and then kind of make sure that it's perfect at the right depth. Now you can see that we've got that all nice and clean. We're suctioning around there. You can see that beautiful hole there. And we're going to go ahead now and insert the endotine. And we're just going to take a little um, kind of detour here to show you how these work. What you have is a little tiny triangle there at the very base and you put the two tips in there. Now one of the tips goes in the triangle and the other one goes into the peg. And when you take a look at it from the side you can actually tell that the very tip of this is right in the peg itself and you can see that it won't just uh, be in the way as you insert it. It's a special device you have to have. Now I like to just turn the endotine sideways and then insert it. It goes into the peg. You push it in. You have to hold the head because it does just pop into place and you know it's right. Then what you've got to do is grasp the hair on either side, pull it posteriorly, and then you're going to push the skin down over the prongs and that will help hold that in place. And I just use my thumb. That leaves a little bit of slack at the posterior portion of the incision there. And then you're all set to go, uh, ready now to go to the opposite side. We'll do the same thing on the opposite side. Again, we'll distract posteriorly with the sin retractor, pulling directly posteriorly from the high point of the brow. Now here the patient had already slipped down a little bit, so uh, it was a little hard to get the sin in. We distract posteriorly. We insert the tip right at the top of the incision. We'll put the drill bit in there, relax a little bit, have the uh, scrub pull the hair on either side. We'll do a little bit of drilling. Now one reason I'm showing you this, you see there's a lot of, uh, of the bone breaking off here. It's a little hard to do sometimes to dissect. And I did it this way on purpose so that you could see you can do it, but it's a lot easier if you will wet it and it's done in just a second. So you saw how long it took me on the first side. The second side was a little easier. We suck out the hole, make sure it's just right and then we'll go ahead and insert here. Uh, in this case, while he's preparing this, I'm uh, drilling a little bit more. So he's got the end of time ready. We've got the hole there in place. We'll go ahead and insert this. Now I want you to look after we pop it in place, watch the pop that we make here as it goes in place. You can see that we actually can support the whole uh, instrument there in the skull. It's being held in place and it's not any trouble at all. You know you're in the right position. It's not loose and everything is going right. Take that out. Now you advance that again down onto the prongs, pushing that down onto the prongs, holding it into place with your thumb, and that will help get everything just perfect as you need it. Again, a little bit of laxity there in the posterior portion of the incision. So that takes care of that. Now we're going to move to the rest. Now we're going to use the Desumptio marker to mark the coronal skin. We're going to remove that with an 11 blade. We'll staple the lateral coronal and the superior incisions at the same time. And then use the Desumptio on the opposite side and staple the opposite side. So now you notice we didn't staple up above, but we've moved straight to the left side. And I'm going to use that Desumptio marker with those teeth. They're directed uh, 
on underneath a plate so that you can grasp and insert it at the posterior lip of the incision right at the very edge get a good grasp with those two prongs then you advance the tissue that's more anteriorly over the plate and then you're going to mark so that it's just right you mark with the desumptio marker and that tells you exactly where you're going to cut then so once you've got a nice mark there you just kind of hold it in place trade off the uh, desumptio instrument for the number 11 blade and we're going to remove an ellipse of tissue with the number 11 blade you can do it all at once you can do it real simply by uh, just cutting off uh, half at a time in this case i've cut off half uh, of the ellipse at a time and we just throw that in that uh, same under buttocks drape um, and that collects everything that we have now we've gotten rid of that now we're going to use the cautery then the scrub's going to help hold the hair up out of the way here uh, just as before so that you can apply cautery and uh, we'll get everything taken care of get all those small uh, blood vessels part of the temporal artery again uh, and make sure that there's no oozing because now we're going to close it so once we've done that we take the stapler now and we're going to close and i usually like to close it first in the middle um, and i'll just put the staple in there and then all you got to do is work on either side to help get it just dry. It's really pretty easy uh, to do this. There's not too many staples that are necessary uh, and you can make sure that everything is just right. This helps hold it up by actually cutting out a piece of the tissue and it's much easier than trying to tie something to temporalis fashion. Now we're going to work on the superior skin uh, and staple it. We're going to go up above. Again, these are a little tough because there's a little bit of laxity and sometimes you have to be real careful uh, that you don't end up with an abnormal uh, level one side higher than the other just because there's not much tension on the wound. And I usually just solve that by distracting posteriorly with the uh, pickups and then putting in the staples. And it works just great in most uh, cases altogether. Now we're going to move to the opposite side and we're going to do just like we did on that side. We're going to mark and remove uh, the tissue uh, over on that side using the desumptio marker again. We've now got the 11 blade. We're going to remove that ellipse of tissue and in this case I'm going to move it all, remove it all at once. Um, and I take that out, put that in the bag. We don't need that anymore. You can see it's just a small little ellipse. Now we're going to uh, take the cautery and we'll apply cautery make sure that it's nice and quiet uh, they're not always this easy uh, where uh, it's there's hardly any bleeding but if you've got good hemostasis with your injection it works super now we're going to staple it up staple everything together and uh, once we've got this all taken care of just about now as you're ready to complete the case uh, you'll typically run out of staples so what we'll have to do is that's why we've got the uh, spare set of staplers on there and you can see we got one kind of caught there. We had to go get the other staple um, reload and now we can finish. And it uh, always seems to be just about that number of staples uh, that you have. You need just a little bit more uh, than what comes in one stapler. So now we're all set. We've basically finished as the surgeon, but now we're gonna have the scrubs wash and apply the ointment. So as we do this uh, washing, uh, you can be doing the paperwork, but they're just going to be washing using, again, the same FISA hex and the uh, sterile water. This is where the under buttock drape really comes in handy to help make sure that it's just right. You'll be able to see uh, that you can, you've done a great job. It helps also, as you, she just did, to lower the head of the bed, and that way everything drains a little bit better by gravity. Uh, you can get everything going. You can really see how uh, that under buttock drape comes in handy, and that's connected up to suction so that it uh, all goes away right away. Now, the other thing that can be happening is this other scrub, if he's available and not busy putting away things, can be cleaning the face some. He can be working at the same time on the ears, behind the ears, cleaning all that betadine off getting everything taken care of and using a comb to help make it all just perfect. Now you don't want them to lift with the comb because they can take things off of the end of tines uh, and actually disconnect it uh, and get everything ready. But this gets rid of those little bits of blood. And I do go ahead and apply ointment at this point because I do want to make sure that uh, she's got real good coverage there uh, for any bacteria or hair or anything that might have gotten inside there. Uh, that's why I also give them the ANSEF. I think it's a real important thing to do that. I've had one case uh, where we weren't real careful uh, somehow and managed to get a bad scalp infection. We were using screws at the time and so she had to be on six weeks of antibiotics just to make sure. Uh, again, you would be in bone here if you got an infection. Of course, 
the people that are immunocompromised uh, make it a little more difficult. But I do give them prophylactic antibiotics afterwards. Now in this case, uh, in case you hadn't noticed uh, towards the end, we saw that the uh, scalp wasn't exactly even and uh, the brows weren't exactly even. So the beauty of these endotines are at any point, she's still asleep and what I'm doing, I'm taking it off of the endotines, pulling it up just to be sure I've got the brow up as high as I can go. In the, other, in the old days, this could leave, lead to problems with necrosis, aside from the fact that you can't really um, get to it uh, very easily without undoing all your surgery. But with that broad-based lift that the endotines give you, you can do this. Now, this time I was able to raise the brow on the right a little bit. I let down the brow on the left a little bit. Now they're nice and equal and nice uh, equal height. And you can see that by pulling in fairly, you can check that they're on the endotines and make sure that they're not going to be coming loose and make sure that you've got nice even brows there at the end. Okay, that's it.